So welcome everybody to a new human experience podcast. Today is November the 14th. Wow. It's uh, how the year has, how fast the year has just gone by. It's almost the middle of November already. And the topic tonight is aligning with your soul. I'm really excited about it because i um, I like talking about this subject and this a process that I want to really share with you all tonight. So I have a request. If you don't have a, a piece of paper or some some place where you can um, write something down, then please um, get a piece of paper, pen, and all that, so that we can all participate in this process that I have prepared for you. It's going to actually help you find out how much in alignment you are with your soul. So, so please um, just, just give some warning for all of you to do that so that when I get to the place where I do the process, then you don't have to scramble around to get the paper and the pen. So here we go. First thing first, aligning with your soul. So first thing is why would you want to do that? Because, you know, aligning with your soul, the first thing that I want to re we really emphasize is that it re pre I kind of presume or presupposes that we all have a soul and I may be a little bold in doing that however that's what I'm saying that's what I'm putting down on the line is that we all have a soul maybe not every one of us has an individualized soul but we all have a soul we all have that and we think of well, maybe not everybody is, is aware that you know what's the purpose of us, our soul? What are we here to do? Not everyone is aware of that. However, um, what we can see is our body, and we have our when we look into the mirror, we see our body, we see our face, we see our features, all of that, and and we can touch our body, but our soul is something that we can't touch. It's something that we can experience but it's not something that we can actually touch so our soul is kind of like our pinky like we can touch our pinky but the analogy i want to draw is that it's like our pinky that we we know we have our pinky but we don't quite know exactly what is the pinky for it because it can't really um function too well on its own however it is a part of our body and we, from a body's perspective, we think of our soul just like our pinky is. We don't know what it's here for, but we've heard that, yeah, we have a soul and so what? Why do we care? The truth of the matter is that our soul is really the primary reason why our body was born and or procreated in this reality. It's not the other way around. It's not that we have a body and the soul just comes along for the ride. It's actually the, uh, the, quite the opposite, is that our soul wants to be here on earth to have an experience. So in order to have an experience in this dimension, in this reality, we need to, the soul needs to create a body to come with it. And the soul needs to create the rest of us so that we can experience all that this reality has to offer us. So it's actually our soul is the primary reason why our body was born in, this, in the first place. It's like knowing that our soul is actually the primary reason why we're here, then the phrase of aligning with your soul makes much more sense because our soul is why we're here so then we need to start to align with our soul but because the soul is not something that we can see touch or um, be able to just isolate and have a conversation with that's why it feels like it's not as easy to find out what our soul actually wants and let alone aligning with our soul. So that's why I'm so, so very excited when I um, recently read a, a book 
It's called The Illusion of Money by Kyle Sees. And in chapter nine, um, so chapter nine, he actually outlined a process which would allow us to find out what our soul actually wants us to do. So that's why I want to share this process with you all. So let's do that step by step. So this process would kind of um, have a way for us to measure what's all the things that we have, um, we, ha we have in our life and how much of it is aligned with our soul. So let's one step at a time. First step, I want you all to just take out your piece of paper, get pen or pencil, whatever you like to. Or if you don't like to use paper, you can just use um, notepad, you know, something that's maybe your phone has, um, has somewhere for you to put down a memo. However you want to do it, it's up to you. But what I want you to do is use the piece of paper or whatever um, or electronic um, material that you want to use is you either write down or you type in everything that you have going on in your life. So what do I mean by that? Let's say, if for, for example, for myself, I have a mother, I have a brother, I have a sister, I have a son and a daughter, and so all of these things. So those are the, the things that are in my life. Those are the people in my life that I, I have relationship with them. So, so those, if I, want, if I were to do this, then this is what I would put on. The piece of paper is every person that I have in my life that's important to me and then all the things other things that I have important to me for example doing this podcast is important to me and for example um, loading the this podcast onto the online is an, something else that I spent time doing in my in my weekday so all the things that I do and all the things that I have, let's say if I own a house, I would put the house there too. So something that actually has, um, I put any, whether it's a person, an activity, or it's um, a thing. A thing can be a house, or it can be a laptop, it can be anything that's significant. So don't list your 10 pairs of shoes unless you are a shoe collector and so collecting shoes is important and significant to you then put it on but things that are so trivial like you don't you don't have to tell me that you have you know a loaf of bread in the fridge so that's really insignificant so just list the things that are significant in your life and so i want you to all to actually do that right now with me so so Please, um, um, because of time, so I'm not going to give you like an hour or 20 minutes to do that. Let's just do um, 90 seconds. I'll give you for the next 90 seconds is to put down as fast, right, as fast as you can or type as fast as you can to just put down all the things or the big items of things that you, whether it's people, activity, habits, or possessions that you own that you, it's really meaningful to you. So write all of that down. And starting now, so I'll give you 90 seconds. I'll let you know when it's done, when the 90 seconds is up. So take that, yeah, keep going. Yeah, 90 seconds. So actually, uh, unfortunately, I didn't download any music that would kind of fill the air. So I'm just going to maybe, uh, there we go, yeah. Okay, keep going. So 
all of the things that are significant. It can be a person or it can be a pet. If your car is the big thing in your life, then put that too. Anything that is significant or that occupies a fair bit of your time, just put it down and we'll deal with that afterwards. You guys have another 20 seconds, so finish up. Okay, time's up. So if you don't have time to put everything down, don't worry. This is just um, to give you a taste of what this process is like. So now that you have the list of however, like five or 10, whether it's more or a little more or a little less, doesn't matter. Just have a list of items. So the part two of this is really to weight each item on a scale of one to 10. One being, I don't want to do this. I hate this. This is so tedious. Well, one meaning that you are completely not resonating with that activity or person or event or habit or whatever it is and 10 being i absolutely love it yes give me more um so 10 is an an absolute you want it and you enjoy it in your life and five is really you're neutral if you have it it's fine if you don't have it it's also fine you don't feel that you will miss it if it's not there and you also don't feel it's too much uh, it's not an imposition if you have it so five is neutral and let's say a three would be something that you it's you don't like it but you don't hate it so that's the three let's say if it's a seven seven would be yes you enjoy it you like it, but it's not a 100%. Yes, I love it. Whereas a 10 is I love it. So yeah, so those would be the the, the rating. However, one more thing is don't. Um, it's also I want you to rate this not from your head. Don't think about it. I want you to connect with your body. So let's just do this very simple thing right now: is to connect with your body. So instead of being in your head, which we most of the time are, is start to energetically just focus on being in your body. Notice what your stomach is doing. Notice what your chest area is. And so pay attention to your body and be in your body because your body has an intelligence that is, I would say, much more connected to your soul rather than your thinking because your thinking messes you up a lot of the times because um, there are activities, let's say, if you, if you drive a, um, a taxi, for example. Some people love driving the taxi Whereas some, for some people, it is really just a job to bring in money. However, when, if you want to, if we, I ask you to rate this, you had me tell you that, oh, I have to um, rate this a, a five or, or at least a five or a 10 because I need this to put food on the table. So the need is because of the need. So that's why we put the, the rating higher. However, that's not that does not tell us what our soul wants us to do so listen to your body this is the the part of the exercise where you check your mind somewhere else just you know, throw it somewhere else and, and send it out on a 
an errand to run and just pay attention to how your body is. And I want you to go and look at the first item on your list and just feel how your body reacts to that. And then don't take too long because when you take too long, you get your mind starts to, to jump in. So just feel what the body feels about that and it just put down a number whether it's a one or a 10 or five or any, any other number, it's fine. Just put that down and then go on to the next item and pay attention to your body as well. And just use your body to give you the answer rather than checking in with your mind or your logic or your rationality. So for each item, I want you to do that. The trick is to just go with your, the first number that comes to you. That usually is the number that is most spontaneous and comes from your body. So quickly, just go down the list and feel your body and then just put a number down. So I'm going to give you another 10 more seconds to do that. trick is to just keep moving on and don't allow your mind to jump in and interfere okay great so time's up so then step three the step three is to find the average so the to find the average is to just add up all the the rate like you, you have for, for let's say item one is 10 Item two is a three, and item three is a, let's say, a seven. So if you have 10 items, then you just add up all the numbers. So I'm actually going to um, give an example. So this is what I have. This is what I have. I think I have 10 items there. So each one, I put down a number. So that's the number according to my body, and I would have that. So now it's the time to add all of this up. All the number that's under this body number column. So add all of this up. So actually the, I've added this up before. All of this add up to 67. So because I have 10 items, so it makes it easier. So my score or my average is 6.7. So that is the score I have with the, the items that I have. So 6.7, the average. So what is, what is this average then? So this is the average amount of alignment according to the list that I have. So I want you all to do this now with your, the list that you have. Add up all the numbers according to your body and then just average it out. So I give you a little bit of time to do that. You just add all the numbers up and then you divide it by the number of items. You may have a little more or a little less, that doesn't matter. So just find the average. Okay, so I'm just gonna assume that you have found your average. So that is really a, the average amount of alignment you have with everything that you have in your life. So I'm gonna assume that that's, that's let's pretend that that's everything you have going in in your life. So that is the number. The average is really the average amount of alignment that you have currently with your soul. And now you may doubt this number since your mind likes to um, take control and, and throw in some monkey wrenches. However, I've already mentioned that your body has an intelligence that is often um, very overlooked by our mind. 
And when in doubt, always trust your body. And even, even when you first meet someone, it's all, always listen to your body, not what your mind tells you about, oh, how good looking or how terrible looking this person is. But it's really listen to your body because your body is um, picks on the, whether it's the event or the person on an energetic level. So when you trust your body and you do this, this exercise, then you actually come up with an average number that gives you an approximation of where you are in terms of being aligned with your soul or not. So I, I love this process because it creates, it, it, it provides a method to see how much your life right now is aligned with your soul or not. And when you can measure something, then you can start to improve on it. So this is great as a measurement tool. The, the objective of doing this exercise is not to find out how, um, how much you are in alignment or how much you are not in alignment, therefore you have to beat yourself over the head. That's, it's not helping. So the idea is to just to let you know where you stand right now in terms of being aligned with your soul. And then, um, let's see. Then the next part is, how do you improve on the, this? How do you improve on it? If you, let's say, have a low score, my score is 6.7, which is, it's not really enough for me because I would want it to be a 10. Maybe, okay, if not a 10, at least an 8. So how, do, how would I improve on it? So the first thing I would suggest you do is to really start to um, detox. Detox your mind and detox your body. So how come? Because we want to align with our soul. However, if we don't know what our soul is trying to tell us, trying to commute what does our soul is trying to communicate with us, then we really don't know how to go according to our soul. And the, the best way, I wouldn't say it's the only way, but definitely uh, I would say one of the better ways to start to listen to our soul is to meditate. Because when you meditate, you clear your mind. Your mind will be thinking about, oh, okay, what should I be uh, having for breakfast tomorrow? Or what, sh what do I need to do to, in order to you know, make enough money and all that? Those are things that our mind may, may occupy our mind, like all these things. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with, with any of these thoughts. However, in terms of allowing us to listen to what our soul really wants us to do, having all these thoughts in our mind is not helping. So when we start to meditate, that's when we actually have a, a period of time where we clear our mind. And when we clear our mind, then our soul can start to give us messages. Our soul always gives us messages. It's just that when we clear our mind, we can actually hear those messages. So doing a detox of our mind definitely helps. The other thing is actually to detox our body. Detox our body meaning to um, things, something like a, an intermittent fasting can help because as we just gone through the exercise, is our body actually has an intelligence in there. And when our body gives us aches and pains, it's actually a communication that we're not doing something that um, we do, or we are, either we are not doing something or that we are doing something that is putting us out of alignment. So aches and pains is really our body's way of telling us that something is not right. So um, please slow down and take a look at it and make corrections in your life. And the more we can have a cleaner body, the easier it is for our body to be able to communicate with us. 
and our soul actually communicates with us through our body as well because our body has the intelligence to know when we are out of alignment with our soul and when our body has so much toxins when we have when our food or the medication that we're taking is stressing our body so much the body cannot function the way it is supposed to so doing detox of our body and also detox of our mind and actually allow us to hear what it is that our soul is communicating to us better so we take the time to do that to to be good to yourself be good to your body is to do that detox and the second thing that you can do that i suggest that you can do is really set that intention set the intention first thing before you even get up in the morning set the intention is that this morning before i go get out of my bed is i set my intention that i want i'm going to do more of the things that is in resonance with my soul so there is a list of things that you have already put down and i suggest that you redo this this exercise again after this um, this call so that you can have more time to put down all the things that is meaningful and, and significant in your life so you have a complete list right right now the list is maybe incomplete because i didn't really give you enough time to do that so when you have a chance to have a list and also do the rating then you will know there are certain items in there that is rated high by your body and your soul as well so do more of those things because the more you put your body um at a more excited and aligned the more it is you will tell your body you, it's actually a, a feedback system the more you do things that's in alignment with your soul that your 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 body likes to do the more your body and your soul would arrange all more of those events to happen and so that this is a, a cycle that it's a upward cycle and also if you you keep doing the things that is low rated low then it's a downward cycle because when you when you engage continually engage in lower rating then it's really a message to your body that you this is the direction you want to go so which is really not what we want to have in our life so set the intention to to the best of your ability do more of the items that you have rated high and avoid the items that you have rated low and in the evening i also suggest you to set the intention or, or maybe um not just in the evening but every time you meditate is to set the intention that you want to hear more messages and guidance from your soul so that you can start to train yourself to pay attention to listening to your soul and the more you have that intention the the more your soul can start to speak to you because your soul when you consistently ignore it it will go on vacation and just come back and check on you and say oh is he or, or she is he ready to listen to me yet uh, no okay i'll go for a vacation again come back and check however if you put the intention out that you want to align with the soul you want to hear more you want to do the things that ignites your soul more then your soul would stay with you more it would start to give you more guidance it would start to arrange events to bring things that will align with your soul much more frequently and then the third thing that you can do is that um, invariably there will be low lower rated items on your list um, I don't know about you but you know for myself there are things on my list that 
I just, I don't know, I just can't get excited to do. For example, you know, loading up the, um, the, the, the files for a podcast, like, even though I love doing the podcast, but those menial things, menial items of loading up to just waiting for the internet to, to work in that, I just cannot get um, interested in doing those. So there will always be items like that on your on your list and sometimes it may be a a relationship in your life that is like that and however those are some sometimes you can let go of those lower item things however there will always be some low rated items things on your list and you you're not ready to let go of for whatever reason like for me as well, if I don't enjoy doing loading those things, I can pay someone else to do it. However, right now I don't have that. Um, I would say extra funds that I can pay someone to do it for me and take care of all the, all those Joe jobs, or I should say chores, as far as I'm concerned. However, one day I would be able to. So then what I would need to do is actually start to set a plan is to the best way to handle those items is to really um, either set a plan. So have the projection is, okay, I want to increase my, let's say, um, funds that are available for me to, to do that. So how, how can I do that? Maybe I need to save, let's say, an extra $10 more each week or each month in order to start being able to um, have a, a like some funds that will allow me to hire someone else to do all these things for me. So the idea is to, for the low rated items on your list, is to start making a plan so that you can, at some future date when you are ready, be able to stop doing those things and have a, a plan to have those things out of your life so I don't have to deal with that anymore. So that's one of the ways you can do it. And when if it's something that you, for whatever reason, you have to have it in your life, then you need to look at what is the belief system that really have you um, be not even open to the conversation to let those items go. So start to have those conversations with yourself and narrow it down to what is, what is holding you back? What is the belief? A lot of times it is really just a belief. That I, I believe that I can't change it. So that alone is a limiting belief. The, the thing is we can change anything if we simply allow the universe to come and show us possibilities that on our own we haven't been able to come up with. And when you look at those items, because any low rated items is, does not really mean that it's something that we have to um, throw out right away. It just means that we have to start looking at that item and be open to changes and the, the the first thing that we need to do is to be open to changes, to come in. And when we co-create with our soul, then the soul will start to bring in helpers for us to, in a, a future date, be able to let go of those low rated items so that we can have time and free up our schedule to have more of the high uh, rated items in our life. So number four, is um is really for me the most important thing is all of this it's about aligning with your soul so when you align with your soul you are in relationship with yourself and your really your relationship with your with yourself is really the single most important relationship in your life and um this relationship with yourself is really what you need to start looking at. 
and get to being comfortable with yourself. Comfortable with yourself doesn't mean that you have to be completely um, spotless. You have to be completely perfect. Doesn't mean that you have to have your life absolutely going well. Being comfortable with yourself is that no matter how, um, I would say, out of control your life may seem to you, is you need to be able to have the relationship with yourself that you, okay, see it for what it is. Your life is whatever it is right now. And still be okay with yourself. And still be able to be true to yourself. Because and what I mean is that whatever it is that's in your life that somehow is not working out, somehow is giving you some trouble, is to still be able to have that relationship with yourself that you don't blame yourself or you don't shame yourself or you don't think that you are less than or you don't believe that you are um, somehow you know, um, doomed or something like that is to know that oh okay right now this is where I am at my life but that doesn't mean that um, whatever is I am at my life is who I am. Who I am is infinitely more than what's showing up in my life. And when you have that trust in love and acceptance with who you are, where you are in life, when that relationship with yourself is absolutely impeccable, then you will start to and you will start to be able to shift it because everything in your life right now it's just it's a creation and if you truly don't like it and you process all the negative beliefs that you have in your life now right now that have you hold that creation in place when you've done all of that clearing out then you can do you can create something else when you have that that um, belief in yourself that you're way more than whatever it is that's showing up in your life then it is just play everything that showed up you don't need to have a, a judgment against whether it is horrible or whether it is absolutely fantastic is just whatever it is that you want to experience and create. If you like it, create more. If you don't like it, then just create it and make something else completely new. So that is my idea or my, um, those are my ideas of how to improve your alignment with your life is to, just to recap, is to detox your mind and body and uh, second one is to set intention each morning to have a to to do the things that are more in alignment with your soul and also the intention to hear messages from your soul number three is to start to look at each of the low rated items and start to make a plan to do something about it so that you can transform those items. And number four, most important of all, is always be impeccable with your relationship with yourself. That's all I have to say on this item. So I'm gonna...